I'm going to make a pear tart. I made this tart a little while ago and my husband thought it was like one of the best things he's ever eaten. And it really is an excellent tasting tart. It's not difficult to make and it's, it's a just great tart. So we're going to do all of our pastry first in our food processor. And in here, I have two cups of regular all-purpose flour, no fancy baking flour or anything, just all-purpose. I'm gonna to add to that one tablespoon of confectioner's sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one egg yolk, get in there. Stubborn, okay, well. And I'm gonna add one stick of, or a half a cup of very cold butter that I've cut into cubes. I'm just gonna dump that in there. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And when I have lemons and I bake a lot and I use the rind in the dough, I uh, like to save the juice in a jar in the refrigerator. I can use it for plenty of things. And here I have some ice cold water. I'm gonna start off with two tablespoons of the water and I'm probably going to need more so we'll see you never can tell now we're going to put it on and process it okay I am going to add some more water a touch more. So I've put in about four and a half tablespoons so far and I'm just going to keep mixing it until it all comes together. And that's good enough for now. It's not totally in a ball but I'm going to do that on the counter. Get it all out. And you might think, oh, that's really overworked, that pastry. Not really, you'll see. It's a really nice pastry, it's very rich, you can see by the color. And I'm going to wrap this up in plastic wrap and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, you could actually roll it from the state. Um, and it sometimes cracks when you roll it out to fit into the pan, but don't worry. You can always patch it, the cracks won't show. So I'm gonna wrap it up. And I'm gonna go put it in the refrigerator for about 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit and give me a head start when I take it out. So, see you back in about 15, 20 minutes. Here's our dough, about uh, 12 minutes, not that long. You can actually put this in the freezer. Uh, you can make this day before and use it the next day. You could freeze this for up to six months. It's really a nice dough that way. Like I said, when you roll it out, if it cracks, don't worry about it. You just patch it all up. Now, I'm going to use a nine inch removable bottom tart pan. I want something with a low side. This is about an inch and a quarter depth. If you don't have one of these, you can use a springform pan, uh, which most people have for cheesecakes. Uh, put it in the bottom and just put it up on the sides to about an inch, inch and a quarter. If you don't have that, then use a regular pie plate. If you use a regular pie plate, you just won't unmold it later. When you serve it, you'll just cut it in the pie plate and serve it that way. So there's plenty of ways you can make this. So here we go. I'm gonna put a little flour on that and on my rolling pin. It moving. If you keep turning it a quarter turn every couple of rolls, it will stay more round instead of getting to be elongated. Plus, it won't stick to the table.
people don't use pears and desserts enough. I think pears are absolutely wonderful. I love them in just about anything, and I love the cooked pear. Just don't know why people don't use them more. Now, let's see. Sure, that's about right. See how I have a nice big crack here? I'm going to just patch that up. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to just put it on my pin, get some of this. Ooh, look at that. I just gave it a nice big crack myself. I'm going to get some of this out of the way and just put it in my tin. And now I'm not going to push it in. I'm going to ease it in. Otherwise, you stretch it and some parts will get thinner than others. It's much easier this way. Now, there's going to be a lot of, of dough left over and you say, oh, that's a waste. No, you can just re-roll it and make some small little hand pies if you want to. Um, it's up to you. I might try to do that, depending if I have any leftover fruit. And then just ease it in gently so it's nice and fitted into those flutes all around. There we go. Now I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to dock it. And this will just help it in baking to get a little bit more crisp. I'm not going to blind bake this, which is what you would normally do when you do this docking. This will just ensure the pastry gets a little bit crisper in the oven. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in my refrigerator while I work on the pears and get them ready to go into the tart shell. So let me clean up and come back with the pears. Time to get our pears ready for the tart. I've got three Bosque pears and I'm peeling them. And now I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut them right down the middle. I'm going to take a little paring knife. I'm going to remove that little bottom that's hard, little tip off the top. And with a melon baller, I like to just go in and take out the whole seed cavity. And then if there's any other hard pieces, like there's a hard piece that goes right down um, the top of the pear, I'm going to just take my knife, cut around each side, and just kind of flip that out of there. Add that to my pear pile. Do that for my last piece. Get rid of the seeds. And get rid of that hard piece. I mean, you could probably leave that in, but it's going to be crunchy. All right, that's the prep on our pears. I'm going to get rid of this. And yes, there's a garbage can over there. Here's my tart shell out of the refrigerator. Now I'm going to fit the pears in. And I want, you're going to have to cut these a bit. And I'm going to fit them so that the pointy end is pointing towards the middle. So I'll put one on the end there, one there, well, maybe I might not have to. And then one there. These are fitting in pretty good. I had huge, huge pears when I made this last week and they just really were fat and juicy. I had to cut them down a bit because they just did not fit in this pan. Okay, now there's our pears in the pan. I'm going to put these in the refrigerator while I start working on the filling. So let me put these in the refrigerator and I'll come back and show you how to make that delicious filling. Now I'm going to make the filling and the topping for the pear tart. I'm starting off with one egg in a bowl. I'm going to put in, oh, just a pinch of salt. I've got a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm going to give those a little stir. Then I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. Now the grated rind of one lemon. And the lemon won't go to waste because I will squeeze the juice from it and I'll put it in that jar that I showed you that I keep in my refrigerator for all my baking and for tea and just other things that you might need a lemon for. Let's 
good enough for now. And the last ingredient is one cup of sour cream. This is what really makes it so nice and creamy and delicious. Okay. Now just mix it up. Make sure you mix it up well. Try to get it nice and smooth. It smells like a cheesecake. It's that sour cream. All right, here's our pears in the tart shell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this over. And just kind of ease it around. You don't need to cover the pears. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get them a little bit covered so that when I pour the topping on, it will um, just adhere better to the tops of the pears. And just push it into all the little nooks and crannies. My oven is on at 400 degrees. So let's put that aside for one minute and let's make the topping. So I have three tablespoons of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one half stick of butter cubed, and two tablespoons of flour. And I'm going to put those in my little mini guy here. Just dump it all in. I think I'll give that a mix first. Good. Now the butter. It's nice little cubes. This is like that little streusel topping, but it's so delicious. Let's get rid of that. And we're not trying to get this into a paste. We just want it to be crumbly. Bring our tart back. You know what? I'm gonna, I still have too many big pieces of butter in there. I want it to be a little bit more combined than that. What'll happen is when you've got a big piece of butter that's just sitting on the dough, you'll get a little bubble of it later, but it really won't change the taste any. And now just crumble it over. How can this not be good? I mean, really. Here's my oven just sitting there waiting for me. And now we're going to put this in our oven for about 25 minutes until the filling is set and it's just delicious. All right, 25 minutes. Here's the pear tart out of the oven. It's still very, very warm, but I'm going to unmold it. I left it out. It's been out about five minutes. I'm going to put it on a pedestal because it deserves a pedestal. And one easy way to take these kinds of pans and get the bottom off is to put it on a can, let it drop off, and then you can just slide your tart onto your serving plate. Yes, I still have the bottom 
part of it on there, but that's fine. It can stay there. And this, I'm telling you, you have to try this. This is unbelievably delicious. If you like cheesecake and you like pears and you like pastry, this is all of that plus the crumble on top. It's really, really delicious. I hope you try it.